This is a Cyrus 6 integrated amplifier and it powers up fine. Uh, we can you know, vary the volume control in the front and change the input selectors. All the voltages are fine but there is no output signal and so what can be what can be the cause of that and I uh, have seen this a few times before as well um, and so if we look at the circuit board we've got all our normal power amplifier stuff we've seen before but then we've got these two larger ICs here and this first one is the input selector um, so that via the front panel switch selects whatever input you're using and then routes it to the second device which is a digital volume control both of these devices are controlled via serial bus over over the ribbon here um, so I've seen these volume controls go before and that could be a problem here um, alternatively maybe the input selector is just not doing its thing so I mean the first thing we do is kind of check the supply rails on these things and, and I, I've, I've done that uh, uh, just before I turned the camera on and if I look at the input selector I've got my minus 15 volts there quite good uh, and if I look at the plus 15 it's reading 14.2 which is a little bit low you know if I look at my uh, uh, where's my plus 15 there it's there plus 15 on the supply is exactly 15 so there's something causing that voltage drop and that may just be some series resistance, That you know, it may be normal, I don't know. Um, so we'll maybe trace that out. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to feed a signal in here and then we'll just, we'll just trace it through. And uh, we should see that signal going to the input selector and then we should see it coming out and going into the volume control. And wherever the path's broken, we'll kind of make a decision on what we're going to do next. So I'll set up the scope and we'll uh, just uh, probe these signals through. So let's take a look at the signals then. <clears throat> and I know that pin 1 on this uh, input selector is the input from the CD, which is where my source is applied. Just got a, a sine wave source applied to that. So I can see that uh, input going to the device. Uh, and then if we look at the corresponding pin on the volume control, that, that signal should be routed around there. And if I measure on that pin, I see nothing. And if I go to 1, 2, 3, 4, pin 5 is the output of this device, and I'm seeing nothing there also. So that's making me suspicious that this guy is the culprit in this case. So we need to look further at that. Now I mentioned obviously these these devices are serial controlled uh, from the front panel, and so we want to make sure that we're getting all the correct uh, serial data, or at least we want to see traffic on the on the serial bus going at the device. So I'm probing the um, digital input. A pin of that device there and if we do a single capture then I can see the program in there uh, and so we can be quite sure that that's working just fine so we're, we're attempting to program this device and it's just not listening to us so I think my assessment so far is that that device is suspect and we probably need to look at that um, so the next thing we'll take the board out and we'll We'll trace that um, plus 15 volt rail just to see if we can figure out why it's dropping. Um, I don't believe that's the source of the problem here. Maybe that because the device is faulty, it's drawing more current on that rail, and so there's some voltage drop somewhere along the path. But I don't think that's the core of the problem. I think the device has uh, died on us, and we're we'll going to have to look at replacing that. Um, so I traced that plus 15 volt rail and I found that it goes through a diode um, so that's the reason the voltage is just that little bit lower and uh, you know there's nothing nothing to be explored there it's uh, it's doing what it should do um, so we really think this device is dead and it's gonna have to come out and of course this is a 30 pin device 
And if we try and, uh, you know, remove the solder from the pins and just extract the device, I'm pretty sure uh, that we're not going to be 100% successful. And as I've commented before, these printed circuit boards are not the highest quality. And what you find is that these uh, traces that you see, the multiple traces going on to that device, we're going to tear some of them off. And um, so it's just not the way to go. And um, so what, what's our other options then? And I was kind of tempted to go in with a Dremel and, uh, you know, chop all these pins off and, and uh, do it that way. But of course I'm going to make a bunch of metal dust and they, uh, you know, one wrong move and I've destroyed the board. So I've kind of gone off that idea. So I think what we'll do is we'll try and snip each of these pins one at a time. And uh, then we'll, you know, we'll heat, heat up the pin with a soldering iron and try and remove each pin uh, one at a time. And uh, just go through, uh, go through all 30 pins like that. So let's uh, make a start on that and see how we go on. Right, so I tried with the wire cutters and it, it uh, I got the first pin but I can't really get into the, the ones further down. Um, so I'm going to have a go with a Dremel and we'll just carefully go along and see how we go here. I've got some masking tape in here that caught most of that dust. Um, so I've done one row there and what we'll do is we should be able to now just lift this IC up. Right, that's us. So there's a device on its end. Now if I just waggle that back and forward now I'm going to break all the pins off and then we'll desolder them quite happily. So let's let's have a go at that. Quite medieval uh, for this kind of work, but uh, this is what you have to do. So there we go, that's came out very well, quite happy with that. Oh good, right, so I'll just uh, take the board out now and we'll lift each of these broken pins out one at a time, clean up the joints and put in the new device. Right, so we'll just uh, desolder these pins one at a time. I just grab it with the pliers. I think uh, just pressing it against the solder and iron there and lifting it out is the easiest way. There we go. So these are coming out cleanly, obviously, and I'm no not in any danger of damaging the board this way. So, I'll go through all 30 of those, get them out, we'll clean up the joints. Right, so all the pins are out, and uh, we'll just go over all the uh, positions with the solder sucker now, and remove the uh, solder. And I'm, I'm just touching up the joints here with some fresh solder, just so that you know there's a bit of flux there, and uh, they're, they're going to come away quite easy when we start to do it for real. Right, so let's uh, let's just go through this then. There we are then, that's all 30 joints done. Hey clean enough and no, no disasters, no traces ripped off the board. So great, we'll go and look at uh, getting the new device back in now. So with the board cleaned up, the new device then should just, uh, just drop right in. And there we go, no bother at all. Right, so easy enough now then, we'll just go around and solder up all those pins. So the new device is all soldered in then and uh, the amp's powered up again 
and uh, if we look on the output of the input selector which is the input of the volume control I can now see a signal so we're in a good place then we've, we've been correct that that volume uh, sorry the input selector device has uh, been dead and if I uh, change the input selector then you can see that I can switch on and off the the uh, particular source there so that's all good um, however there's more to the story and what we find is that um, on the output of the volume control even if I turn the volume up I seem to get nonsense on my scope and then I get a kind of burst of waveform there and then it dies so uh, my expectation is that the volume control device is also dead and we need to go and replace that and I don't have one here so I need to order that before we can uh, a deal with this um, so that's the next step we'll park this one for a while until I get that part so this is probably five or six weeks later now and, and the issue is that um, these uh, devices both the input selector device and the volume control device they're both obsolete so getting our hands on some stock is, uh, can be uh, challenging at times now whilst I say the volume control is obsolete, it's actually the package that's obsolete. This dual inline package is no longer available. But they do still produce the surface mount um, uh, device. And the, you know, so that this is it's pin compatible and function compatible. It's the same device really. Um, but of course you can't mount that device where this one was. Um, so the answer to that is we use a little extender board here. Uh, or a little adapter board rather so we just solder the, the uh, surface mount device to that and then use some headers uh, to, to actually convert that to a dual inline type package and so I've done that and uh, that's uh, what we've got inside the unit now so you can see it here and the board's actually offset uh, uh, slightly which is an advantage in this case um, because we've got these two capacitors here on the left hand side and if the board was centred that might be a little bit of an issue for us so that's worked as a little bonus so let's power it up now and we'll see if we can uh, see if this volume control actually works for us now right so the scope's set up now and I've got my usual uh, test signal applied so let's see if we can uh, get some life out of this volume control device Alright, let's turn the volume up, and there we go, we've got some life there, that looks good. So that's doing exactly what we want, I'm quite happy with that. So I think we're good then, next thing we'll uh, play some music and that should be us done for this one. So that's everything back together now, so let's power it up and we'll see how it sounds. In other words, darling. 